Well, a new report says that Canada is home to some of the most overvalued housing uh, in the world. And uh, we've got another report out tomorrow, for instance, having the latest on the job figures across this country and in the United States. So let's tackle both of those business stories with Ashley Patterson. She's the Senior Finance Editor at Yahoo Canada. Ashley, great to see you again. Great to see you too. Let's start with this housing figure because the OECD doesn't like our housing and yet the numbers keep going up. Exactly. So they said that Canada ranked among the most overvalued property markets in the world behind Norway and Belgium only and certain property markets in other big areas like Japan uh, the US and Germany were considered undervalued so the OECD looked at two measures they looked at a price to rent ratio which basically gives you an account of profitability if you're a homeowner and then a price to income income yep. right which gives you a measure of affordability and Canada over the long term consistently ranked above average in both of those measures. So it just shows that, you know, the Canadian housing market on the world stage is considered still to be overvalued. And it keeps getting higher, as we saw from these numbers, at least in Toronto and Vancouver and some of the big metro areas that people say are overinflated to start with. Exactly. So we saw um, from the Toronto Real Estate Board that while home sales were down in May over the course of the year, they were down about 3%. Home prices are still rising, still up 5%. And we're seeing the same thing essentially in Vancouver. Home prices were up in May over the year for 1%. And home values were up 1.8 percent in Calgary it's even you know a better story I guess if you're if you're a homeowner but mm. I mean we consistently see that more data is coming out and the real estate market is continuing to be frothy even though you know finance minister Jim Flaherty came in last year and tried to regulate that a bit yeah he was trying to cool down the housing marketplace mm -hmm. overall or at least tighten up the measures so that the banking industry didn't get collapsed on this thing but if we had enough uh, the OECD is the one that's interesting to me because they indicate that if there was an uptick in interest rates wow look out kind of a thing exactly and they also marked um, any kind of price correction so if you have a large mortgage and we see home value suddenly plummet you could become underwater in your mortgage, which is definitely something that we saw happen in the U.S. As well, you mentioned interest rates. If there was suddenly to be a spike, or if we went through a recession and there were you know, massive job losses, a lot of people in this country would be really vulnerable in terms of what property they own and how that would affect whether or not that they could keep that property. Yeah. Meantime, uh, this Friday, we mm -hmm. get job figures. Now, what are your thoughts there? Because these right. are key drivers. It's going to be a key economic report per usual. So uh, economists are essentially estimating that we might get around 15,000 jobs created for, and this would be for the month of May. Mm. Um, we've really not seen a very good spring in terms of job creation. I mean, in March, we lost 55,000 jobs. In April, we only gained 12,500. So we really haven't made up those, those declines. And the real area where people are really being affected is with Canada's youth, that, that key demographic between the ages of 15 and 24. They are more than double the national unemployment rate. The current unemployment rate is sitting at about 14.5%. And if you are just graduating university or mm. if you are still in school and you're looking for a summer job, it's really not a very healthy market for you right now. Yeah, and that's symptomatic of what's happened in Europe as well because you're looking at youth at 40% unemployment rates uh, there. Uh, what does it say about people getting jobs? Are they finding part-time as opposed to full-time jobs? Are they looking? Are they giving up looking? Uh, that was a phenomenon we saw in the States, for instance, a couple of years ago, this discouraged worker syndrome. They go out, they can't find a job, they give up, they go on pogey. Exactly. And it costs all of us. Exactly. And then they end up staying on you know, government assistance for quite a long time. Um, we're seeing the trend right now in Canada is that we're actually seeing a spike, a record high in temporary employment. So there is employment out there, but it's not necessarily that full time job with a full suite of benefits where you're going to really be able to start your career. It's in temporary employment, so you might get a six month contract with no vacation. And we're seeing that in industries like nursing, the IT industry, and also the financial services industry. And last year, StatsCan reported that you know we hit a record high in temporary employment, and it's now making up about 13.6% of Canada's broader workforce. So it's really not a great place if you want to start your career right now. If you're, if you're you know, 22 years old and you've just, you've got a university degree under your belt and potentially maybe you know thirty thousand dollars or so in student loan debt it's a really scary time kind of counterintuitive though because some areas like twitter and facebook and social media and they're taking off i mean are there opportunities in those spaces well that's a really good um 
way to get your foot in the door essentially. So any kind of tips that I have for young people are number one, clean up your online profile right. and not just a surface Google search either because you have to think the way an employer would think. They want to essentially see what you're doing online. There was a recent study out by uh, careerbuilder.ca, sorry, .com, which said 65% of hiring managers look at your social presence to determine whether you act in a professional manner or not. Wow. So the tweets that you send out, the Instagram photos you send out, your Google Plus account, those are all accessible potentially to you know a potential employer and they're gonna use that to assess what kind of candidate that you are. I better be careful myself. You better Ashley. be careful. <laughs> Ashley, great to have you here. Yet Thank again. you. Ashley Patterson, Senior Finance Editor of Yahoo Canada. Still